today is an abandoned video. We showcase one of the best abandoned locations we came across last year, a part active psychiatric hospital in Ireland. The building in question dates back to the 1800s when it was opened as a district lunatic asylum. Poor inspection results and mistreatment accusations have led to the steady demise of the structure, with the majority of its main block vacant and decaying. It contains some classic architecture, working power and many items such as medical equipment left behind. Join us as we explore and document the facility for the first time. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked the question, do you think we are missing architecture-focused homes, instead generating efficient modern housing? We had many interesting responses, but have selected this one from Stephanie, who claims that new builds lack in character, so more should be done to protect the rarer examples of older design. We totally agree with this, and although the modern builds help many people, it's a shame the past detail is slowly being lost. This week, we want to hear your opinions on what should happen to the rare artefacts we discover in this video. Let us know to possibly feature in our next upload. Midway through our summer trip to Ireland in 2021, we were in the area of this gigantic former asylum. Although we had never seen pictures of an abandoned interior, it was one we had noted as boasting potential, with sections apparently closed. When another plan didn't work out, we decided to take a closer look at the complex. From the imposing front, it was clear that if there were unused areas, they could contain some special aspects, but it didn't really appear that much of the building was disused. Around the back, however, dilapidated signs in the brick and wooden board showed it as neglected for a long period of time. We luckily found a tight entry point, away from any of the active properties developed more recently, behind the asylum, and in little time we began wondering one of the greatest chance decisions we had ever made. Some sort of beeping going on, I think it's the fire alarm. This is like a, um, a lounge room with a pool table. A lot of chairs. A lot of chairs. Still some bulbs left. Site map here of the female section of the hospital. Wow, it really opens up here into an amazing, colourful corridor. The decay is minimal but really perfect. These are definitely cells with the peephole and the fact it's a really small enclosed room. Our early thoughts as we started a lengthy duration within the asylum were that we were going to be travelling over a back and forth of modernising and reverting architecture due to many additions to the structure over its 150 years of use. You can see some Hospital beds up ahead. Just look to my right in here. Definitely not where it's supposed to be, but hydrotherapy bath. So much equipment. I've got such high hopes for the rest of this explore. A 
really sure what these machines are, but they're all packaged up, which probably means the active hospital is storing um, some new items here, which means we should move out of this section. Seems like there's a visible path that people use, however the building is still very decayed. These unopened batches of equipment might also have been outdated and left in the space available in the disused parts. Nevertheless, we didn't want to come into contact with anybody at this time especially, so we briskly moved on towards the canteen. So much kitchen equipment. I think it's the most equipment I've seen in an abandoned hospital before. Yeah, it's such a massive place that they must have had to cater for a lot of people, hence why the Kitchens are so big. Originally, the psychiatric hospital was constructed to accommodate more than 300 people, but this was probably expanded as wings were enlarged and the facility extended as a whole. Because of the sizable capacity, a huge food preparation region was necessary, suitable to manage all patients and staff. It is likely that the kitchen and canteen was mothballed as the structure's patient numbers fell dramatically. A much smaller set of rooms will be in place nowadays to host the depleted amount. It's a huge room here. It's like a main hall or a canteen. Oh my god, look how many beds. Oh my, I have never seen so many beds in one area before. This is bloody ridiculous. It's a shame, really. Yeah. This hall would have been nice if it was empty or set up, but I mean, still extremely cool. This was the hospital's hall, possibly modernised in the last 50 years. Its pillars and low-hanging chandeliers still maintained a grand appeal and operated to this day using the same power as the active blocks. As for the hundreds of beds, we figured they were being stored there from the live building, so once again we soon left this area. Later on, we would speak to a worker through a window, who told us that they had been sent from other hospitals only to be returned after the pandemic. whole nativity scene here in statues. It's actually the second time I've seen it today in two different abandoned buildings. Oh, look at the architecture. It's really nice, isn't it? Wow, this is a really nice corridor. Glass at the end. This must be admin. Yeah, it must be. Could be close to reception, actually. In fact, I think it's on the right here. Chandelier. Yeah, it's really nice. The name on the mirror as well. The old entrance to the complex had seen thousands of faces in its lifetime. Built in the mid-1800s for an estimated price of £40,000, supposedly equivalent to £3 million today, the site opened as a district lunatic asylum. It was designed in a conventional Victorian hospital fashion, in a gothic style with Tudor details, and was only extended four decades onwards. All these main building offices are locked, but here's an example of what one looks like. Time for the second floor. Damn. I prefer the colour scheme on this one, I think. It's more subtle.
You know, this place is fairly old when there's a smoking room indoors. Upstairs, we started to feel a lot more comfortable in a naturally decaying, untouched setting. Clearly, besides few locations on the ground level, the rest of the floors were truly derelict and were beginning to offer some fascinating remains. Some mattresses. Look at this architecture again. This is typical asylum toilets. I'd be surprised if we don't see a bath. There's one. The lock on the door. Well, I'd assume this would be where one was. Sadly it's gone. Hopefully we'll find an intact one. And just give that classic asylum bath scene. Despite being interesting, some asylum iconography could not prepare us for what we were about to walk into. There is a ton of stuff in here. Oh my god. Wow. There's a skeleton in the corner. Oh my. There's a dentist chair as well. That's the first one, proper intact one I've ever seen. It's such an old one. The colours just so nice. It looks like it's 60s maybe. Yeah, I think so. I don't even need to say much, just look at all this old stuff. The penny farthing does it for me. So it's just to top it all off. This little thing's cool. It looks incredibly old. It's like a toy race car. And you've got these crutches next to it. This room was the real jackpot for us. It seemed like anything rare had been stashed within what was actually a small canteen. Moving around the minuscule space, we attempted to get a closer look at every remnant that was gathering dust. This is a model of the labyrinth in the air. this room wasn't originally purposed to house all this stuff but even still it's just mind-boggling array of items in here from medical equipment to archive photographs signs and all sorts this skeleton's really cool you really can tell no one's really been in here because this wouldn't have stayed intact for this long These trophies just left, it's very sad. But they were never kept by the rightful owner. This is a small ward. It's the first one I've seen with curtains. Over the years of activity in the hospital, a severe lack of care and mistreatment was common, just as it was a regular occurrence at most of the lunatic asylums of the time. One of the darkest recalls is that over a thousand bodies of patients that passed away whilst residing in the structure were buried unmarked in the land surrounding it. 
Furthermore, many inspecting services had found the building inadequate to house people, outlining damp, peeling paint and poor sanitary facilities as some of the reasons why the site should be closed immediately. It was these factors that has caused the steady closure of the main block under a decade ago. I think this bit has been closed for less time. It seems to be much less decay. There's a bed in every room. Corridors are just littered with equipment, furniture, yeah. little wards on each side here as well. Each part comes to this central section that opens up. The decay was very inconsistent across the long hallways and rooms of the hospital. In some cases it would appear clean and almost active until you crossed into an alternate section where it suddenly changed in deterioration. This is maybe due to a damaged roof above which might be a reason for the leaks reported by the inspectors leading to the asylum shutting. Some more wards here. I really like the core scheme in these. Just never gets old, it's always different. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's completely different, the colour. Yeah. The floor design's nice as well. Arches. Looks like some nice big rooms here. Oh, we're second floor admin again. This is really nice. The detail on these. Yeah. Continues as well, even at the end of the corridor. Decorative pine cones still in the fireplace. This is such a spacious staircase. So tall. This looks like a really nice corridor up here. Wow. A lot taller than the other ones. With a lot of decay as well. In the central point of the main building, the most ornate architecture could be found. Here it felt shameful to leave such a prominent and historical structure in disrepair, contrasting to a sense of justice for the dark factors that subliminally went on during the asylum's occupancy. Look at this room. The old wooden thatch ceiling. This is right at the top of the building. It's even got a bay window, almost like a stage. Wonder what they used it for. Back out of admin into more wards. We're on the top floor now. Really like the floor and the corridor again. There's not really been any that I don't like. 
This one has a more typical hospital colour scheme. Finally reaching the highest storey, there wasn't much of interest except for scenes of dilapidation in comparison to the belongings and equipment left in every room downstairs. On the other hand, the concerns of electrical fires were high, with the power working more frequently than anywhere else in the complex. And just like that, the colours change completely. A chandelier. That's strange. Just because we haven't seen any of those in the whole building. Here's some hydrotherapy baths. It's a nice setup. They must play color really well when they're painting these places. <laughs> Literally. There's an archive room over there. Another one here. Rows and rows and rows of papers. It's probably all locked. Oh, never mind. Just empty instead. I feel like some of these will be full though. After completing the entirety of the massive disused psychiatric hospital, we headed off needing to find a place to sleep for the night. It had been an extremely successful venture that was mostly unplanned and we came away with arguably the most interesting location from the trip. Everything about the asylum's historical regard, vintage architecture, old-fashioned medical equipment and dated artefacts made it an exceptional discovery in our books. Two active wards remain on the ever-changing site, opposed to a vast amount of the main block being out of function. We aren't sure what will happen to the abandoned regions due to their scale and proximity to a live medical service. For now they sit without real purpose, only to present a slight glimpse into the awful past of the treatment towards mental illness. We hope you enjoyed joining us on this exploration. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. We also share a print bundle with every property we post on the channel. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned asylum. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed another one of our finds from last year and another video from our island trip. There are still many more to come. See you next time.